Here we go, first photo vlog in a long, long time. I am, a lot has changed since my last photo vlog here on the channel. Well, one, I've got two children. Second is my camera setup is different. If you have been following along with the channel, you know that I've switched over to Fuji. I have my X-D2, been loving that. I got that when I did before we had the babies and it's been a, really the perfect camera for me to take photos around the house, capture their daily life, really. So what am I shooting on today? I've got the 80 millimeter macro lens. I've also got my 100 to 400 zoom with the 1.4 teleconverter. So I uh, got some range today. Uh, I've been enjoying taking out my 80 millimeter macro lens just around the neighborhood. Living in suburbia, trying to find subjects can sometimes be little difficult. It's not like I live in the most visually interesting place, but it's a challenge and it's a challenge that actually forces me to take photos a little differently. The other thing that's changed that you might see right now is the difference in the video. This is the first time I'm actually testing this out. It's the GoPro Hero 7 vlog setup. I don't know, we're just going for a walk, brought my cameras and <laughs> we're gonna see how it goes. So let's, let's get to it. All right, so just coming up to this lavender bush, just gonna see what kind of shot I can get. When I'm doing macro photography, I will actually put myself on a burst mode just because getting that perfect focus is kind of hard. So what I'll do is I'll get somewhat focused and then like just kind of move my body forwards and backwards just ever so slightly, just like, just like this, you see in the camera, oh, we got a bee here. So, you know, always trying to get those shots of the bee. Another reason why burst mode is good. Now on auto focus mode, it's sometimes hard to get that super close focus. So I'm gonna turn it over to manual mode and manually focus as close focus as possible. And then I'm just gonna move my camera in. And there you can see the difference between this photo and the ones from before where I'm like a lot more closer. Sometimes I feel like the close focus, it doesn't work that well with the autofocus. So we got this bee here right in front. So I'm just, I'm literally like an inch away from this bee. Walking down, we, I came across this uh, bird feeder. I've actually seen this before, so it's kind of hard to see, but I put on my 100 to 400, and let's see if I can get in here and get some, get some shots. So I'm realizing that some of these shots are really dark, so I'm gonna boost up my exposure compensation because it does have such a bright background. It's kind of exposing to that, so I'm gonna expose a little brighter and see what we get. Nice, okay, so I'm gonna move around a little bit, see if I can get a different angle and maybe a different background as well because the background of the sky is like super bright, so let's move around this way. Okay, this might be a little bit better. We got a background of some greenery. Now my exposure is too bright, so I'm gonna bump that down just a little bit. All right, so as we walk to try to find another shot, I guess I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I am actually looking for when I am like out in the neighborhood especially in particular for macro shots. Uh, what I'm looking for is something like more specific, something like smaller. Okay, we got this rose right here, so I'm gonna actually shoot that really quick. With macro photography, it's not always about just 
going up and getting the um, closest that you can get. Sometimes it's about backing up a little bit so you can see more of the subject that you are actually shooting. Like for example, with that rose, I had it's hard to see what these photos are gonna look like when I'm just snapping them and kind of walking away pretty quick, but I'm going to guess that the one where I was backed up just a little bit is actually going to turn out a little bit better. So that's, I guess, one tip with macro photography is just, it's not always about getting as close as possible. The other thing I'm always on the lookout for is like not getting a macro shot. This is an 80 millimeter lens, which is uh, great for all kinds of photography. So I do kind of keep my eye out for those shots as well. You can see here on the left hand side, we got some flowers kind of coming up. Flowers are so easy to photograph. That's the thing, and that's why that's why I shoot a lot of flowers. Um, it's good to challenge yourself with some other things, but let's just see what we get here. So the thing with flowers too is just trying to figure out if there's another subject, like a bee or an insect. I just saw a butterfly fl fly around, but I don't see it anymore, so. Right now, I got a few shots in a few different locations and I'm happy with those, but now, now I want something different. I'm looking for something different than flowers and animals to, to film. So I'm just keeping my eye out on, to see if there's any sort of other subject. Um, I, I'm in the mindset of macro, so I am looking for something like small and detailed, uh, but uh, we'll see what, if I can find anything. All right, back here in the studio, my GoPro actually ran out of battery. So tip number one for myself is to make sure I bring my extra battery. Uh, but I did wanna show you a few other shots that I got that day when I was out shooting. Like I said, I was looking for something a little bit more, uh, not ne necessarily interesting, but different than just flowers or plants. So I did see this cool sort of uh, garage that uh, one of my neighbors has, has a lot of these cool old retro signs and, and stuff on it. So as I walked up, I took sort of a shot from further away. Then I went in and got a couple closer up shots of just the signs. Then I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting. So I got down at like an angle and even more of an angle, and I used some of the foreground elements of the the fence to cover up and create some more depth, which I thought was kind of interesting. Did see more flowers, saw the uh, sunflower there, just took one, just kind of test shot from further away, realized it wasn't gonna be anything special, so I got up close, got something super up close of all the little seeds in the middle and then this is my favorite shot from over on the side with uh, the petals and kind of the transition into the center which I thought was pretty interesting you'll see that one on my Instagram page if you go over to Phil Ebener on Instagram saw a couple of succulents kind of interesting then I saw this more sort of abstract shot this is the stop light hand from the street signal and I took a couple shots just trying to get some different angles uh, straight on, more angled, get super shallow depth of field to get some of that bouquet in some of those lights. Thought that was interesting. Walking home, I, I don't know how I spotted this. It was just out of the corner of my eye. I saw a ladybug on a cactus. So I took a couple shots of that ladybug. This was one of my favorite shots from the day. Again, it's all about trying to get those subjects and that's a part of the plant, not just the plant itself. I think that's what makes it more interesting. And then at the very end, right before I got home, I saw the squirrel up on this tree. And so I walked close, as close as possible, as slow as possible, zooming in with my 400 and the 1.4 teleconverter. Was it, I was able to get a couple really close up shots with nice detail. Now all of these shots that you've seen in this video are completely unedited. So you'll see some of the edited versions on Instagram over at Phil Ebener. And if you're interested in photography and learning these kinds of skills, I have the Photography Masterclass. It's a complete course for beginners who are just getting into photography or anyone who's into photography who wants to improve their skills. It's got over 20 hours of content 
amazing, amazing stuff. And one of the best parts is the community that we've built on Facebook for the Photography Masterclass and friends. We've got weekly activities, photo challenges, monthly photo editing challenges, live streams every month competitions so much fun over there so click on the link below in the description of this video to enroll in the class and you'll get instructions for how you can participate in all the activities too cool i hope you enjoyed this photo vlog and i look forward to sharing more in the future uh, with other just photo adventures that i go on cheers and have a great day